If you're super confused on what kitchen essentials you really need to have in your kitchen at home, I've got answers for you. This is my kitchen essential video. We're talking about the basic affordable items that are gonna make your life so much easier. For those of you who don't follow me, I am a full-time food blogger, a self-taught cook, and a host with Amazon Live, which means I play with cooking gadgets all the time. Like it's my job to play with the newest gadgets. And that's why I wanted to release this video because a lot of you ask me, what do I actually need? What do I not need? And this video is gonna show you the essentials that I think are just gonna make your life so much easier. These are everyday items that I use probably every single week and they're all affordable or they can be. You can always choose something on the spectrum, but regardless, there's something for everyone and you can find links in the description with all the products I'm talking about. So let's get to it. A word of advice, get yourself a big ass cutting board, okay? You're gonna need space to prep your ingredients. You might as well have a whole countertop dedicated to your mess. You don't have to worry about getting it dirty. This is a big butcher block, it is expensive, it is worth it, but if you don't want one of these or if you don't have space, a large bamboo cutting board like this will work for your veggies, your herbs, your fruits, you know, produce. And then I recommend getting a large plastic one for your meats, the fish, the gross things that you don't wanna cross contaminate and you can easily wash. My favorite topic, knives. Let's talk about them. <laughs> Some people might tell you to get a knife set and while knife sets are great, they're very expensive and I don't use a lot of the knives in my set. The one knife you're going to use every time you cook is a chef's knife. If I had to tell you to pick one knife out of everything to invest your money in and to use every day, it would be a chef's knife. There are different kinds, we'll do a video on that another time, but all the things this can do for you, the options are endless. You can slice, you can dice, you can chop, you can mince, you can crush garlic with it. You just have to be careful. You can even peel vegetables and fruits with a chef's knife as long as you're using it correctly. Hold it like this, don't hold it like this. Um, and I'll do a whole video on how to chop things, but definitely get yourself a chef's knife. Now, if you wanna add a little more spice to your knife collection, the other two I would recommend getting are a serrated knife and a paring knife. Serrated knives are great for, you know, slicing your baked goods, things that you just wanna delicately slice without pushing down on it or breaking it. Like a tomato has a really tough skin to break through, but it's very delicate. The serrated blade actually helps to saw through and get a nice, beautiful slice. I love having a serrated knife, not necessary, but I use it often. Finally, a paring knife, it's small and allows you to have precise cuts. So if you're doing something really special on a small piece of food, like, like making little divots, or even if you just want to chop the tops off of strawberries, paring knife's really helpful for that and it's great for peeling produce as well. Long ass explanation, but yeah. Let me tell you about the revolutionary $10 product that will change your life. This is the bench scraper and I own five. You really only need one and they are fabulous. Not only do they help you organize your workspace so you can easily move your ingredients around without getting your hands all dirty, but they help you with picking up your ingredients and moving them into a pan without, you know, like if I had to pick up these avocados, they would melt in my hand. Instead, bring them over here and I put them wherever they need to go. No fuss transition in the kitchen. Another thing about these, which is amazing, is that a lot of them come with conversion units, measurements on the side, so it's like having a cheat sheet in your kitchen. This is telling me measure equivalents, so one cup is eight ounces, 16 tablespoons, and then it's also showing me centimeters and inches. So if I need a dough that's one inch thick, I can just measure it with my bench scraper. And finally, cause, cause this can do so many things. Finally, if you're making a cake and you need to smooth out the edges, you can turn the cake and keep the bench scraper on one side to flatten it out. They do have separate ones made for cakes, but in reality, you can just use your regular bench scraper as long as it's clean. Before you start any recipe, you have to read it, I would say twice. 
go through the ingredient list and then go through the method, then when you're looking at the ingredient list, you'll see that every ingredient has the method in which it's supposed to be prepared next to it. Usually there's a comma and then it says the preparation. You're going to prepare all of your ingredients and put them into bowls. This is gonna help you organize your space so you don't make a mess. And these are called mise en place bowls. Mise en place means putting everything in its place so you are not a sloppy cook. I mean, if you are, and that's what you wanna do, that's good for you, then do that, then you don't need these. But I will say, using mise en place bowls has made my life so much easier. Squeeze bottles are gonna help you get that perfect chefy drizzle with sauces, oils, vinaigrettes, and they're great for just storing your oils in. I don't know if you ever buy those giant things of oil and you're like, where am I gonna put this? Put them in the closet, fill your squeeze bottle, and just refill them when you're done. They're also great for seasoning your pan, they just make life easier. You're not gonna pour a bunch of oil in the pan when you're using the squeeze bottle. Plus, they look really cool in the kitchen. They make it look like you know what you're doing. Cause you do. You're watching this video, you know what you're doing. <laughs> tongs, let's talk about tongs. Tongs are like an extra set of hands in the kitchen when you're handling anything that's in a hot pan or raw meat, raw fish, things you don't really wanna touch, but you want control of. So I use tongs when I'm flipping chicken, steak, any protein that's searing and not super delicate where I can actually grab it and flip it, um, or I use it to handle raw meats. If you're gonna buy tongs, you don't need a million kinds like me. I would recommend getting one set that's long enough. So if you're playing with a hot pan or frying something, it's a long extension and your hand doesn't have to get super close to whatever you're cooking. Yay, we love tongs. You can use a microplane to zest citrus, which adds a lot of extra citrusy aroma to your dishes. You can use it to make a garlic paste, ginger paste. You can grate fresh nutmeg as a final touch on your dish. And of course, you can use it to get that really beautiful, elegant grated cheese on your pasta. Is this thing on? This, my friends, is a whisk, and you, you know what these are. So that's it, you need one, thank you. I think you should have one large whisk for a large bowl of dry ingredients or wet ingredients, and then a smaller whisk if you have to whisk together a salad dressing or a smaller liquid, oil, vinegar, vinaigrette, whatever it may be. This gives you a little more precision to work with small bowls. This gives you precision to work with larger bowls. You can buy these in sets, so look out for that. Shouldn't be super expensive, just make sure you know, it looks like this, and it's not one of those like big chunky ones. Good? Great. Cool. I was gonna talk about everything I have in here, but then I realized you can usually just buy them in a bundle if you look for utensil sets. They have tons of them on Amazon, and they all come with pretty much the same thing. Here's what I would look out for. What is it, a tooth spoon? Let me just look it up, sorry, really. What is spoon with teeth called? Uh, no. What is pasta spoon called? Uh, spaghetti spoon? <laughs> Whatever. I'm gonna call it a pasta spoon. <laughs> I'm calling this a pasta spoon. This is so helpful for when you are cooking pasta, long, thin spaghetti noodles, any noodle at all. All the water gets sucked out and you can transfer it to your pan with sauce without having to dump everything in the colander. This is also great for boiling veggies. When you blanch things, you need to transfer them to the ice bath. Literally anything you have in boiling water, this is gonna grab onto it like a hand and drain the water out. This will grab on and drain any liquid out. This is just a slotted spoon. You got a ladle for transferring liquid into one pan from another without making a mess or just for your gravy, sauces. Rubber spatula, so important for baking or lightly folding ingredients together. Can't recommend this enough. Look for this for any utensil set. And then usually utensil sets will come with spatulas. These are great for you know your average thing, but I actually have another spatula that I use all the time that I will show you now. This is the fish spatula, and yes, it is designed to flip delicate fish, but that's why I love it because 
It can work with the most delicate of foods without breaking them. Usually when I'm working with a hot pan, I am searing a protein and I find the fish spatula to just be the best for getting all those golden brown bits off the bottom and getting that perfect flip. This is more of an investment that you can build long-term, but storage containers are so important in organizing your kitchen. It would suck to have this awesome kitchen and not be organized and not know where anything is, right? Happens to me all the time. Having storage containers helps you keep your ingredients in a certain place where you always know where they are and getting clear ones, especially for grains or nuts and seeds, allows you to just see what you're working with so you can quickly access them and understand what your stock levels look like. Storage containers are also really cute in setting up a nice space. So think about getting them. They're not 100% necessary, but as someone who had a nice kitchen before this and had a mess going on, like all the messes in the world and couldn't find anything and so many things went bad, just trust me, it will help you be a better cook. Obviously you don't need to get every single one of these items, but through my experience, they really helped me out. For more information on recipes, cooking tips, etc., you can follow me on Instagram at Dining with Skylar. And if you have any suggestions for other videos, let me know in the comments and uh, like, comment, subscribe, you know, the whole thing. Uh, I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.